I'm your host, Ken Patterson. We are at the 13th annual St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. I'm doing an outdoor photo shoot. We're going to talk about this table saw. That's absolutely magnificent. This is the best hobby in the world. The what's neat. What's neat. What's neat. What's neat starts now. Catch the What's Neat podcast every week and full episodes of What's Neat every month at the Model Railroad Hobbyist YouTube page. All right, back in the saddle. Daniel's here. Richard's here, right, Richard? Hi, Richard. Mike's, oh. Michael's still on sabbatical in Florida. Oh, we miss you, Mike. The, yep, car, the, the Cardinals beach. needed him a little longer than they thought they would. Okay. Oh, I stole your spot for today. Sorry, Mike. I can hear her. We have sound. You got a microphone on? Excellent. All right. Okay. Richard. What are we doing? 267 tonight. 267. Yep. A lot of neat That's stuff. Right. No. It's a Saturday. No. It's Saturday again. Rock and Saturday roll. Night. On the bluff. <laughs> Mississippi River Valley. Richard, give us a countdown and let's have some fun tonight. Three. Two, one. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> and by GL Robotics. With over 61 colors of 3D printing filaments in stock, your gateway to new technology. Check out their website at glroboticsusa.com. Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com and by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's <laughs> Neat This Week, show number 267 for March 9th, 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And I always usually tell you where we are on the video, and April's video is not edited yet. I have six days. And the countdown begins. Well, been working on that scene over there on the layout, and I'm just, I, it's reminded me of how long it takes to build good models are relatively it, nice it models. It takes time. It takes time. You, you can't rush those things. And videotaping it. So I have a lot of video clips to go through. Hopefully we'll create some neat segments for the show. Sitting on the show tonight over here, I've got Daniel Coombs. Hi, guys. Sitting where Mike always sits. Mike will be back, I believe, next week. Yes, yes, he, yes will. he will. I also understand that Denny Yelsma is coming to town here in April to yeah. hang out with us and stay yeah, out here great. on the bluff. It'll be fun to have Denny. Denny's nice. not on the podcast table tonight. No, nope, not tonight. Sitting right next to me on either side of me, I've got Joshua Barton. What's up, everybody? Hey, Josh. It's always awesome to have you, and I can't wait to hear what's going on with your layout because we were talking about it tonight. Yeah. And if we can replicate the kind of conversation we had a few minutes ago, this is going to be a great show. It will be. I hope so. I know now, so. Now, train shows are all over the country. Uh, we've got the Rocky Mountain train show coming up in Denver. That's the one that a lot of the manufacturers are presently preparing to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Here in St. Louis today, we had the Boeing train show, formerly known as the McDonnell Douglas Model Railroad train show. We used to always sit up at this. Uh, Queenie Park is the venue for this, the ice skating rink out there. There was a good crowd, as I show you this video clip. Um, it's, it's refreshing to see. A lot of people carrying the bags around and just 
a lot of happy model railroaders. It is. I love the Boeing show. It's one of the go-to shows of the year for me. It's the they best deals some, you can make around. You swap, a, sell, a, buy, absolutely. and trade. It's more of a swap meet than a train show. Like a it's train a show flea market. Yeah, it is yeah. a deal. flea market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were some bargains there. There sure was. Good um, bargains. And I'm, I'm messing up the video clips, but I mean, there was there was one, there was a, there were boxes and they were black and they had a name on the side of them and I didn't recognize them as any one given manufacturer and I couldn't tell you the name of it right now, I'm sorry, but they were weathering freight cars, all the freight cars, various manufacturers, they had them, they were beautiful, beautifully oh, in the weathered. custom boxes? Yes. Black I, box custom I, models, I think. Yes. Black box I custom bought, models? I bought an Illinois Central Caboose and coil car and it is amazing, the yes. weathering of yes. it. And and to my delight, when I took the covers off, there were coils in each one of those. So, nice. Yeah. It was neat that they had literally their own package, marketing-wise. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Very much so. But that's something that you need if you're going to brand yourself. Love yeah. to have those folks on the show. Yeah. Um, it was just, it's caught my attention in between all the beer boxes full of the Tyco and... I was looking for some heavyweight passenger cars, and there was just such a variety of Lionel, and there was also some layouts there, as I pick up the video clips again here. Yeah. There was two layouts there, um, set up in the auditorium of the ice skating rink, and I believe one of them is actually the McDonnell Douglas uh, uh, club show layout. Uh, Steve and Glenda Mantia were set up there at the show. Uh, Nice booth, and then I do a pan shot again of the room here as we look at all the wonderful folks. Again, the Boeing show was, it was it's always great, the springtime show, because that's the really generally the first warm month mm -hmm. of the year for us. Yep. Not and expecting February to be 81 degrees this year. That's so. right, and now uh, Steve and Glenda are going to yet another trade Springfield. show. Yeah, Springfield. Yeah, Springfield yep. for uh, the rest of the weekend. So. Should be exciting for them. I wish I could get over there to uh, see that one. But, Me too. You know, work and family calls. There you go. Um, we've got uh, some N scale locomotives on the table. One N scale yeah, locomotive on the single, table. Singular. 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 This is a Reading T1 locomotive from Broadway Limited. And I will get some video of this running. This is a sweet little gem with a Paragon 4 sound in it. Uh, 484 Northern. These are hot off the press. They just arrived in hobby shops this week. So for you guys, end scalers out there, the one we've got is the reading with the yellow uh, trim on it. And it's really, really nice with the uh, drivers painted out in the white trim. Yeah, yeah like beautiful. the white wall tires. It's a, it's a watch. Yeah. It's a watch to be able to A, see the mechanism work, and B, hear the sound. Yeah. Watch. Um, yeah. Amazing, amazing, um, amazing. The train running tonight, right there on that camera. Oh, look at that. Wow. How's that for timing? That's a New Haven I-5 locomotive, uh, number 1400, just pulling a mix of freight cars that were sent to me for photo props over the years. That's their brass hybrid, isn't it? Yes, yes. it is. Wow. Yes, let me get another clip of that running and show that thing. The silver Wait, wheels man. have been gorgeous. I've been running it down here for four days straight at, at about uh, 30, 38 miles an hour scale miles an hour, and she's been running perfect, um, pulling those cars. And it's just a joy to see it. Uh, the wheels really make it light up when the lights are dim down here and you're watching TV. I bet. The passenger cars are lit. Um, it, it's just, it's neat to see steam like that streamlined running on this layout. Broadway Limited is amazing in the stuff. And that's a locomotive that we're supposed to be featuring on the April show. So I've got to do edit of that running, show it outside, and then put all that together in the next six days. Well, they, the they, feature on that. They definitely knocked it out of the park on this one. It is a beauty. It sure is. I sure see they are the go-to to steam. You got to think they did all the Pennsylvania steam engines. They've done all Norfolk and Western. And now they're doing New Haven and even now the New York Central uh, Commodore Vanderbilt. Oh, yeah, the upside down bathtub, so to speak, with that bullet streamlined design. Yeah, what I'm waiting for beautiful. is for the Dreyfus Hudson and the Empire State Express to come out from them. That mm, is going to be ooh, bad that um, to the bone. The one thing that they announced that's got me really turned on is their uh, business cars. The business cars. They're coming really? out. Broadway Limited is coming out with some of the most detailed passenger cars. Wow. I mean, wow is right. Um, the Union Pacific. Uh, Yes, yes. <laughs> I got my attention right there. We, we talked about this on one of the shows. They're going to eventually come out with the entire Union Pacific. A lot of the 
That's awesome. That you see in the excursion. Yeah, the executive passenger cars. But we're going to let them talk about that. They're coming on the show at the end of this month. The last show of this month, we'll oh, have uh, nice. Curtis from Broadway Limited on. Well, that's fantastic. Live and not on the screen, right? No, he's going to be on right there. Okay. Yep. Close enough. <laughs> right there. That's fantastic. Let's give him some eye candy on the layout. You want to try it? Yeah. We've never done this before. We're going to try to do this live as we talk. Mm. Or as I talk, as we just just join in, let's dance. Please bear with us. There could be technical difficulties. No, this is going to go smooth. All right. Let's see, let's see how <laughs> you do. We're professionals. Ish. Ready? Yep. As long as the train keeps running tonight. All right. This is what I've been doing this week. Maximize it. Hit, hit that there. Hit that. No, oh no. Hit that one up there. Okay. Okay, there now go. hit that one. Okay, yeah, ready? Play. Start the video and clip. Here we, here we go. I planted grass in the switch yard. And this is nice. not any grass, this is static grass. Yeah. Because I did some reballasting and patching in this yard area as I join it to the finished section of the layout that I've been working on that we've been talking about for the last four weeks. This is a little area that was just plywood. Now it's got a building on it, cement. The tracks are in the cement to park a switcher and a caboose to service that yard and service this uh, implements company that sells machinery. So this area now is almost complete. We still got to do lighting, uh, vegetation, a lot more vegetation. See how it's level right there with, that the, is with very the cement, cool. the white gravel, the tracks are buried, the rails are buried in the rock, everything clears. This is a loading area. I love that. Where the flat car, you know, you just drive it. You can a, drive it right on up. Right, right. That's smart thinking. All the ballast has been weathered with India ink, as are the roads. Um, individual railroad ties are painted one at a time before. Hey, there's that, there's that uh, oh, H1, yeah. that New Haven locomotive, I-5 on it. Um, but yeah, rock and roll. I can't believe how long it took to do this. Just getting the grass to grow <laughs> between the rails. <laughs> but I love that effect of the rails just being buried in the yes. dirt. And everything still runs through the Code 55 rail quite smoothly. Static grass is a process. So this has all got to be put together and shown off how the process of doing these various steps and things were. I mean, even just going as far as painting the track prior to. But it looks Planning great. it out, yeah. getting the topography, the cement, all those different things. Yep, a little more vegetation and you'll be good to go. So that's, so next we were talking tonight on layout construction, I guess, about, you know, the back part of the layout. I guess I'm going to shoot a video clip of it because yes, I'm not going to make him turn to. around and shoot it. Nope but he could. That back part of the layout over there with all the narrow gauge trackage on it and all those buildings and everything on it. Yeah. He's gonna do it. Yeah, he's gonna He's gonna it. go back there. All right, so we're, what Richard is showing you is what we're talking about. And you can't see it from our top, so I'll probably still run B-roll. This is live made up as we go. We did a, a What's Need video on how I built all of that. Correct. So rather than just rip up all that track, which is glued down and I won't be able to save it, it's impossible. You'd never be able to smooth out the foam again if you did. I'm going to take the top layer of the four levels of foam in that diorama and just tear the whole top layer off and start over. Glue a new sheet of pink, relay the main line, and then stand back and see what should go there. And that's really what I'm debating okay, with, come the, back, Richard. with the Fountain City Railroad is the same thing. I laid all track for it when it was in its old position. But now that it's in a new position, I have to relay all new track in a different way, swooping a different way. Uh, the turntable will probably have to be in a different position. So now do I try and use that old stuff or do I just put it aside? Did you glue your track down? Of course I did. I did, did the Ken do? Patterson oh, way that it's so glued down and that I can't pull I'm it I'm starting up to rethink my philosophy on that. I mm -hmm. always try to use a soft type of a base glue so I could get it back up with a putty knife. Um, I mean, I... I didn't build these modules to be down. reused. Right, and that's the whole thing. I didn't plan on me having to redo things. But life happens, and now I'm in this situation. So... I thought I could pull everything up, flip the foam, and try and use it like that, but my hole for my turntable won't line up. Mm. So is it cheaper to just go buy new foam, start all over, and then cut the old foam up and use it for this or for that or for a module or a project? And with that being said, what about the 13 turnouts that I have on there? You know? so. I can try and pull those up, but they never seem to be just right when you put them back down. No I would man. do everything I can. To, now, is it ballasted? Uh, 
Oh yeah, half of okay. the ballast. So and I you mean, used I, woodland snake sinks. Process. Of course I did. Then it's rock hard. It's rock hard. So yeah. I've I've heard oh you can just spray water on it and it'll recondition itself. Oh, but somebody that, told me about something. Was it there, alcohol or something? It's a denatured alcohol mixed with that water. You can spray onto well, it? so I'm gonna I'm. This is what I'm going to do. That's a what's neat video coming gonna, up. How I'm to undo woodland scenic, right. scenic cement. I'm going to take some uh, advice from a few different people and try and get some things done. Because you want to try to save the turnouts. I mean, right. turnouts, I mean, tracks. Well, we don't have microengineering just down the street anymore either. No. So if we need just five bundles of track, we run down there. Hey, Ryan, right. how's it going? Well, Here's we, lunch. We brought you Burger King. Oh, I need some track. Yeah, we can't, <laughs> we can't do that anymore. I That's can't. a little further drive. And yes. we don't have a hobby shop right down the street. So now we have to think and plan and, you know, purchase and order and wait and yada, yada. I, I have grown so much to appreciate the internet, though. Rather than get out and have to drive up to the Woodsmith Woodcraft store, when the belt broke in my, on my mm -hmm. um, Rikon belt you sander over there, sander, yep. just on the internet, there it was, the belt. Oh, my God, they had all the other parts for the bandsaw. I ordered some mm -hmm. blades. Boom, I well, didn't have to go to the that, saw shop and the woodwork right, shop, right. both, which would take an hour and a half for both for the trip. Yeah. Click, click, in the mail. Okay, wow. Uh, yep. Where have I been? But, but, yeah. but, <laughs> but, there, but there is something wow. to be said about going to Mark Twain t Hobby and saying hi to Kevin and mm -hmm. Darren or going to Redboard yes. and saying hi to Paul. You know, it's, it's really nice to be able to interact with those people, and that's part of the hobby that I really like. Not to mention getting out of the house, so yeah. to speak, and then having a little or road trip to yourself. That's right. I did. I, uh, two, two and a half <laughs> years ago when I was going to Redboard all through that summer, multiple times, mm -hmm. that was fun. That was a break to get yeah. away from the studio. Absolutely. They always had exciting stuff that you were looking for. The Tangent 86-foot boxcars, you couldn't find them anywhere, yeah. but they had them. So, they were on eBay for 300 but he had them for 58 uh, So I'll tell you what the best thing was is a couple weeks ago before Mike left, we went down to Chuck's Depot down in Marion, Illinois, and had a great drive. It's right across uh, the river and right down the Chester Sub, so we got to see some trains, oh, and we got to hang out with Chuck, and we'll have a bunch of footage on the next show when Mike's here to help talk about it. Oh. But, you know, that's the thing about taking a trip. We want to go to Paducah. There's a couple train uh, hobby stores in Paducah, Kentucky, which is just another half an hour south of Marion. Right. So, you know, if we get up early, we can take a train day and go to three, maybe four different hobby stores. I get up at four o'clock every morning. That's okay. my new schedule but right now. But it's dragging you out of the basement. That's the tough thing. Well, I've been getting a lot of work done down here since January, the first week of January. Yeah. Like, like it's nobody's business. Just videotaping, building stuff, staying on schedule, staying disciplined, just doing it. Um, the airbrushing. I haven't pulled out the airbrush in two years. I was oh. airbrushing. The spray booth is set up with a filter. It's like, it's not, it's perfect. Everything's perfect. My son came here. He's like, wow, this place looks amazing, Dad. What have you been doing? That's I said, right. I've been working. Working. So it's, right. it's really great to be back on track again and yeah. have everything just working out the way it's supposed to. And it's efficient. Absolutely. Everything's right where it's supposed to be. Now he wants me to put labels on the cabinets. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> so the theory on pulling out that section of layout is the same thing I'll do on this other area of a switchyard where I thought I was going to put some tracks and make an intermodal facility, auto rack loading facility, and or have a place to park four or five small uh, consists of passenger cars, five cars. It's not really long enough to pull it off with the locomotives. So I've got to yeah. come up with a plan over there. But right. to rip out that narrow gauge track again, I think since none of it's actually wired through the foam, take a saw, cut the perimeter, Get a crowbar, pop that foam out of there, cut a new piece, and lay it in there. And now it's a fresh start. So what's your first thoughts on what you would put there? Over I, there now? No, no, no. Over, over there where we were just talking about and you just did the video footage. Originally it was you, planned you, okay. to have a girder bridge with an approach trestle of about 250 feet. Correct. Scaling down a bridge over here in St. Louis that was 600 feet long and beautiful as hell. And that when the locomotives went across this bridge, the bridge actually moved visibly. It was that amazing. And mm. I was going to... So I cut out the diorama seven or eight years ago, nine years ago to the form, topography, and everything to create that but, scene. But then you just put stuff over it. And I just, piece also of foam. just changed my mind so and redid it. Now, now it's, it's nine years later. We know that that curve has to be more distinctive right. through the main line. But what else would you put there? 
you it's, wouldn't. You it's wouldn't. got a potential for a small grain elevator type facility. Uh, stage a couple uh, grain cars, something like that, especially with all the neat grain stuff that's been coming out lately that I have not had the opportunity to utilize yet. Absolutely. There's a lot of products coming out there, a lot of manufacturers are, that are really focused on that industry now. Mm -hmm. And um, it would well, be... Well, that, that has a ton John, of John Parker lit up his grain elevator with LEDs, oh, and it was so saw, beautiful. Yeah. So well, that's about nine foot, ten foot that you have to recondition. Definitely seven feet. Let's look at the tiles, yeah. ceiling tiles. Count the tiles. I can't. Two, I know, right? One, but two, again, three. that's it's exciting to be able to be able to do this. Getting rid of the narrow gauge trackage, going back to standard gauge, realistic type prototype scenes. When I originally planned this layout, all these bridges on here, Kimswick and the Highway M bridge back behind us over here, they're all prototype measured locations but i what i did was i google earth stuff i right. started googling and all of a sudden i found these locations and then i would go visit them and i was hooked i had to model that right and i had the measurements so really um that was my way of building these run by effect scenes for my layout but that shows just where you came from you did all those uh models for lawyers that have to be so in depth and within fun. so much of an inch of prototype. I mean, that's how you learned and how you evolved, even in your hobby, to take that information that you had and put it into that kind of stuff. And it really shows in your stuff. When I was really starting out modeling, I modeled Santa Fe and I was just religious about it. I loved that scenery of Arizona. I loved the scenery between Chicago and Kansas City. That was the Midwest Valley Modeler's layout, was right. that Chicago, Kansas City, double track main line. It was a beautiful layout. Um, doing all these photographs for the various manufacturers where you're forced to, your job is to study the scenery for that location of that locomotive of what colors the ballast, what's the architecture, what's the buildings right. look like, what type of scenery, trees, desert, whatever really broadened my horizons on being able to almost model anything. Sure. And so now I, I don't now model just Santa Fe anymore. Now when you look at something, those are the kind of things you see. I don't see the same things that you see That's true. when we look at the same scene. You know, I'm looking at the fake people are the cards sitting there, and you're looking at what color the ballast is Good and how, how the trees are shaded on one side. You know, you look at it in a totally different way. And I think that's great. That brings both of us, if we're modeling together, you know, to see each other's progress and to see how each other out there learns. That's what I think a, a definite positive for having a club layout and being part of a club is. So you learn from your peers. Oh my gosh, what a head start a club is for an individual. If, I mean, generally, okay, there's the lone wolf model railroader. There's the gentleman that um, models privately, enjoys what he does. Some of these craftsmen guys, you know, they'll sit there for weeks in their spare time building the water tower or that mm -hmm. beautiful laser cut train station or the fine scale miniature kit tricking it all out. Mm, yeah. And they don't have the desire to interact with other people. That's their pastime, that's their hobby. There are other folks out there, and I would think that I'm probably that type of person where when I was young, I did join a train club that my father had belonged to, the H.O. Gagers in St. Louis. And my God, just walking in the room and looking around what your eyes teach you, what you can learn, mm -hmm. broaden your horizon. And I see that's why people like to go to the K-10s Model Railroad Club. Absolutely. Because it's built at a height for kids to see. It's designed for actually all adults and young people alike to right. work with. And the idea is you, it's a walk through the Wathers catalog of kits. If well, you've been sure. thinking about building this kit, you go there, you look at it, and it's like, yeah, that's what I want. They have the office building where the side isn't there, and you can see all the computers flickering and yes. the people sitting. It's, it's very much eye candy, and it shows what uh, a lot of patience and a lot of uh, railroading money does. That's yeah. another thing I've discovered, and this is getting off topic for modeling a little bit, but um, the cost. I'm running to the hardware store every couple of days because I need more cement or this color spray can paint or, you know, new India ink because my India ink dried up in the bottle and I had to make a new mixture. And, mm. and I said, oh, I need to run to Walgreens and get some alcohol. And Landon's like, no, Ken, you don't drink anymore. You don't want alcohol. I said, no, I need it for the India ink, Landon. Okay. <laughs> Different kind of alcohol. Good here. boy. Good boy, Landon. <laughs> but um, 
it's honest to God occurred to me that like when we have Jennifer Kirk or George Bukatok or some of these wonderful folks that create what's neat video material, fully edited videos, it's, it's cost effective to have them do stuff because it's different from my techniques and I'm not spending the time shooting it, editing it, paying for it. I'd rather pay them for the material at a standard dollar amount per minute. Absolutely. And that's been working out kind of good. And this week, this month has taught me a lot about that again. Because I've literally spent my month building that scene and videotaping it. And now I get to spend X amount of days editing it. It's just, sure. it's a fun, it, this is part of the hobby. Editing video trains. This is great. I love my new part of the hobby. <laughs> okay, I'm getting way off track. Daniel, you got some stuff you want to talk about tonight. Yeah, a couple things, and uh, oh, would you look at that? It's this is not a phone; it's actually old school pen and paper. <laughs> Never would I ever thought that'd be doing this once again. But anyways, uh, so again, hi, how y'all doing? And uh, so basically, I got a quick little weathering. I don't want to say rat a tat, but I quickly. Uh, Ooh, he said rat tat tat. Rat a tat, rat -a -tat weathering. Rat -a -tat. Just basically, quickly got this done within 30 minutes. Uh, these are well too. I got three of them. The new Walther's mainline 64 foot uh, Trinity reefers with the uh, carrier refrigeration diesel units. Um, and these are current modern cars on UP's roster. Um, basically here, of course, you can see the example of what you get out of the box. But what I did is I decided to go ahead and just make a little bit grungy, grimy, so to speak. Nice. Let, let him film that go slow so he can film but, your, uh, your roof and all your details. Basically all the roof. This is all with nothing, no airbrushing. This is my first go full of doing just acrylic chalks. Oh, That's really? it. Nice. And never did I ever thought I could actually That roof make, is chalks or is that oil paint? That is both acrylic. Acrylic paint. And then, of course, the graffiti. These are actually CMR uh, model scale, I think, micro scale uh, decals. These aren't nice. like my own graffiti, but that's just a way for me to uh, practice. But uh, yeah, I think it came out pretty good, and it looks like it's probably prototypical. Um, mix of colors here, just raw sienna, burnt umber, and uh, what's the light? What's the little yellow color? You asked me that earlier, and I can't remember it because mm. I don't ochre. use it that much. Yes, thank you, yeah. Richard. Yellow ochre. I don't use it that much, yeah. Or burnt ochre, I should say. So. Anyways, and also I'm probably going to be putting a Tsunami sound car in this. And I'll get the refrigeration noise, and uh, I might also get some more of these. Because for a Walth, this is Walther's mainline. This isn't Walther's Proto. But looking at this car here, it's like you've got all the detail right there. Yeah, nice metal sure wheel do. sets and the metal couplers. I mean, shoot. And for 35 bucks a pop, you can't really beat it. There you go. You know? Yeah, that's great. So anyways... Now that that's uh, over with, let's see what else I got here. So, I had the honor and privilege to go into our friend Joseph Gento, who oh. will actually be coming next Hi, weekend. Joey. Hey, hey Joey. Joey. Oh, I'll give you your chip back, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, he had an open house for his uh, Penn, I think, Pennsylvania Reading Industrial Division layout. Okay, and it's nice. a small layout contained in his apartment. Now, I don't know the proper specifications, so sorry, Joey. I don't want to... Disclose any information, but you can probably tell us more about that he, when you come in next week. You can go on weekend. Facebook and check it out, too. Touch of the Brush Model Weathering. It's also his uh, business. He does a lot of weathering work. But anyways, so what I got here is we got some B-roll clips now running. I'm sure he's going to let me screen or let you screen record off his YouTube channel. The Open House, some clips that he shot okay. nice. at his Open House. There was more than, I think, 27 of us there. And he graciously offered let me stay overnight. And then the next day, we were out rail fanning Sweet. with one of his... Uh, train buddies who had a scanner in his truck and all that. We were able to film some of the Canadian Pacific Kansas City, so I got some clips here. Uh, first one would be, let's see, of an oil train. I don't know if it was crude oil loaded or unloaded, but here's an oil train coming with a old great ghost KCS locomotive. One of the trains we actually saw over the overpass. So the train going underneath, now as me actually being a full-time uh, locomotive mechanic, so to speak, it was actually a thrill just to actually see the locomotive down below and to smell that exhaust of that throttle Very neat. just, you know, coming up in your face or whatever. But here it is, and I actually got a clip where Joe and I got down close to the tracks, not within range of where we're trespassing, but down off into the but woods close. just a little bit. But close. But the train was cruising at a slow enough speed that we were able to get it shot right here coming into that curve. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, what a thrilling experience that is. Wow. Very so, cool. Yep. And I believe that is probably it off my notes. But again, stay tuned for his visit next week, and we will see what's up. Nice. That'll be fun. Yeah, it sure will, be. will. I believe we got uh, it's a, we got four shows this month. There's a lot of neat stuff going on. Yep. Um, anything else we want to talk about going around the table? I don't think so. 
We've got a lot of, uh, oh God, I gotta get that show edited for April. It's gonna be a really good show, rock and roll. Yeah. I think I've covered everything on our notes too. I've got this resin kit that Robert Steers has sent me. Uh, he wanted me to look at this. Uh, this is not resin, this is 3D printed. I'm going to talk about this. Let's just do this because this is pretty yeah, amazing. I want to. Dr. Steers called me up and said, I'm sending you this car. Um, it's a new company, 3D Central Model Railroad Print Shop. This is an Evans Slide Cider All Door Box Car Phase One. Look at that detail on that. And I'm, I'm going to try to show you either video of this or still pictures of this. I'm not sure how to cover it, but it's got the channels for the doors to roll on, it's got all the bar detail on the door. Yeah. Um, and it comes with a lot of etched metal parts. It comes with a uh, under frame complete. I mean, this is durable, too. I've seen multiple paint schemes of what railroads, uh, what uh, private companies have used these cars. Um, I believe one railroad, in fact, did use these cars. I don't know if it was a Milwaukee Road or not, where they were the only uh, Phase 1 railroad that actually had these. But this is a pretty amazing kit. Uh, check it out, 3D Central. I believe they got a website, uh, 3D Central. Uh, Trains.com, trains 3D printed in the USA. Oh, yeah. So very, that. very detailed, no lines. Amazing with 3D printing. Yes. Amazing. It's evolved in the past 10 this years. This is a way, this is just a, yeah, wow. Yeah. Every day. I, I need some dumpsters. Work. I need some satellite antennas on the office buildings. There's there's things that I, I'm starting mm -hmm. to, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check out mini prints. All the details. Yep, Carl Bernardo. We're going to have a lot of mini print stuff because we've got three months of boxes upstairs in the kitchen that Mike really? needs to talk about next week. Yeah. A lot of his stuff. All right, guys, with that, this is the best hobby in the world. It sure some is. of the best there people, is. and it's sitting all around me tonight, including Richard sitting right there. Thank you, Richard. Richard always gets to see the show before anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with that, let's go run some trains. All right. Bye, everybody. I well, you know, right? You get to play with the NCE system. All right. Tonight. Daniel, you got the NCE throttle. Nice. You know why I like it? Because it works. And it's ergonomical. I know. We needed to do a show where we could just talk about stuff on his website. Let's do that. Let's do a thumbnail. Ready, set, uh, yeah. look at camera number one and smile. <laughs> Rock and roll. Yay. Here. Good I want to make a wooden holder for this. Yeah, that's a good idea. And you're the one that painted up that really cool one. I want to show that off on the show again. All right, I'll bring you next week. Yeah, where it's all grinded so up. So much neat stuff yeah, going like on. An old we've got a lot of Broadway Limited stuff showing up next uh, for next week's show. I think we've got Rapido stuff showing up here. Ooh, well, Rapido, you know, huh? because I've been purchasing a few things. This. I'm back in the hobby. It feels Very good. Cool. <laughs> I love that. Hey, the video clip thing worked out good today. Yeah, it yeah, did. It sure Very did. smooth. You did a good job. And we'll see how they got it. Now you out. need a 75 inch TV behind us oh, and just good. put all the clips up there as we're talking about. It. Lord. My son came by like he's like, you need multiple computer screens. Yeah. Really? Like yeah. mission control, right? Okay. Yeah. I like my one computer screen. Wait, wait till the <laughs> wait till the studio is done and then we can come and do a show over there. I'll build a new perfect studio for it. Yay. 30 minutes. I know you want to run some Instagram now. Yeah. Okay. I wanna see that little guy run. Right. You gotta sound.